I'm with Rebecca Kiesling and talking about the life issues, that's something that uh, is something personal to you. And for anybody who doesn't know who you are, why don't you explain that? My name is Rebecca Kiesling and I am a pro-life speaker, attorney, a mom, a wife, and my story is that I was conceived when my birth mother was abducted at knife point by a serial rapist. She went to two back alley abortionists and I was almost aborted, but I was legally protected because abortion was illegal in Michigan, even in cases of rape, I am alive today. Those pro-life leaders, activists, were my heroes and I owe my life to them. I tell people, you know, if your mother chose life for you, how nice for you, but mine did not. She chose abortion and pro-life leaders forced her to carry me and that's why I'm alive today. And she's thankful for it as well. And you know, that's something that a lot of people just don't understand. It's an issue that's often brought up and I know you've had to deal with this in trying to explain to people when they try to create legislation they throw in these Hyde Amendment type provisions as if that's some sort of great answer to solving our abortion problem. What do you think about Hyde Amendment type of provisions? Oh, I explain to people the Hyde Amendment is the Hyde Amendment exceptions are so much more extreme than saying to me I think your mother should have been able to abort you which is like saying if I had my way you'd be dead right now but it's taking it further and saying and our tax dollars should have paid for it ouch you call yourself pro-life wow and then you get exceptions like in Texas's sonogram bill it's a bill that doesn't even force a woman to have to look at the sonogram. It just says that she has to be told that she has the opportunity to view a sonogram of her unborn child. But somehow it's just so offensive to even suggest to a rape victim that she would have the opportunity to look at the rapist baby. That they, they wouldn't even want to suggest such an outrageous thing. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's really insulting and it is not in any way pro-life. If they can't even stand up for us in such an innocuous bill like that, how are we ever going to overturn Roe v. Wade? You know, in footnote 54 of the U.S. Supreme Court's opinion, the court pointed out the fact that Texas had exceptions. It was life of the mother, and they also pointed out that it was a lesser crime. You didn't have as much of a penalty as you did for regular homicide. And also there was an exemption for the mother. And the court said that that undermined the state's whole argument for personhood. Because clearly, Texas and any other state that has these exceptions, you don't really think that's a person. And I explained to people that you need to understand that when all aren't protected, none are protected. And you think that in all your wisdom, you're saving the 99 in exchange for the one? No, you're not all are still in jeopardy because you made the exception in the case of the one. Yeah, uh, and as a matter of fact, in the case of Roe versus Wade, you had Norma McCorvey who was trying to use that rape exception to get her abortion, and uh, I guess it was proven that she wasn't raped, and so therefore she couldn't have the abortion. But, you know, we the, the real point of this issue we know what we're talking about here. We know what abortion is. And, and often when I debate this, even with the most hardcore liberal pro-abortion people, in the end, it, they might start off in the beginning, oh, clump of cells, we don't really know when the soul begins, whatever. But in the end, everybody agrees we're talking about human life. Yeah. That's the issue, isn't it? We're yeah. talking about human life. That's interesting you bring that up about, well, we don't really know. And in my philosophical abortion essay, I talk about how you know, you wouldn't back out of your driveway if you thought there might be a person standing there. Or you, you don't go shooting through the woods when that could be the biggest buck you've ever seen, or then again it might be a person. And, and why not? Because human life is precious. And if you're going to err, you will err on the side of caution where admittedly there might be a person. And, you know, just recently uh, Ron Paul was asked about the question, well, what if your daughter or granddaughter was raped? And he said, Basically, he would just get her the morning after pill, get her plan B, give her, give her some hormones. Mm. And this liberal journalist challenged him and said, well, wait a second, don't you believe that life begins at conception? 
And he said, yes, that's right, life begins at conception. And the journalist said to him, well, then how can you defend that? Because isn't it possible that that might be taking your life? And he said, it's possible, but you don't know. That's what Ron Paul said. You don't know wow. if that's taking your life. And so because you don't know, then it's okay. Really? So it's okay then if you go shooting a gun through the dark because you don't know if you're going to kill somebody. Really? That, that's really what you believe? It's ridiculous. We need to think these things through. We need to think our positions through and what it's really saying. You really believe that I deserve the death penalty for the crime of my father? The Supreme Court said that rapists don't deserve the death penalty. Even child molesters don't get the death penalty. Yeah. But me, an innocent child of rape, deserve the death penalty? Right. Well, and in the case of, we believe that really what it's going to come down to is that people of the church are going to speak up. The pro aborts aren't going to speak up. The liberals aren't going to speak up. The uh, the atheists aren't going to speak up. I mean, we look at you folks out there, the Christians out there. You're you're the ones who are going to make a difference in this. Who are going to rise up and and stop this. And how important do you think it is for churches, let's say leadership, pastors? How important is it for them to speak about this issue? Oh, it's critical. Uh, there's a great pamphlet put out by Heritage House seventy six. Dot com. They have the pamphlet of my story as well, which is conceived and rape a story of hope. But they have this pamphlet called Sing a Little Li Louder. You ever seen that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it tells a story of uh, this man who had been in Nazi Germany and how trains would come by during their church service and they could hear the screams. But they came like clockwork, right? So they just planned their church services to have the singing at the time that the trains would come by and then when they could steer up near the voices they would sing a little louder hmm. and I and this guy talks about that that's what he sees in America today that the churches are just singing a little louder and I, I heard this one speaker I wish I could remember who it was but he said abortion will end when the church says it will end it's so true because right now the church has not spoken with unified voice saying it will end. That's right. Well, here we are, and we're speaking out, and everybody has a right to live. And if Thank criminals, you. yeah, yeah, especially you know, this, this young lady here, <laughs> and, and you know, you think about the reality of what we're up against, defending people in the most unprotected place which you would think would be the most defended place the womb should be the most defended place and yet it's not the children have to live in fear because 115,000 people aren't born every day in the world because of abortion and so we really got to pull some strength together and, and speak about this I mean we, we just can't be quiet can we no and you know one last point about the whole rape exception issue so I understand that people want to be people of compassion and they think that to show that you care about rape victims that you have to make this rape exception but they don't realize that uh, first of all the abortion rate nationwide today in unplanned pregnancies is over 50 percent you ask people well what do you think it is for a rape victim have people say oh it's got to be like 90 no like 95 right they think oh Mm -hmm. A rape victim needs an abortion. A true rape victim could possibly love the rapist baby. Uh, but there's two major studies done. Rape victims choose abortion 15 to 25 percent. Wow. Less than half of your average unplanned pregnancy, which I think is very telling. The majority of rape victims raise their child, not the rapist baby, that's their child. 25 percent choose adoption. People assume most would want an abortion. That's not true. And then they assume that she would be better off when she's four times more likely to die within the next year after the abortion. Higher murder rate, suicide, drug overdose, domestic violence, divorce, depression, throughout their lives, and on and on. So it's not even compassion for the rape victim. And people need to understand that if you really care about a rape victim, you should want to protect her from the rapist and from the abortion and not the baby. A baby is not the worst thing that could ever happen to a rape victim, and abortion is.